Well, y'all, we finna dive on into some meltdowns because as y'all know, my boy Trump won to be the president of the United States of America. And he is picking his team, y'all, ring by ring. And he ain't just going for some small people. He going for the people who is going to get the job done. And he got the left shaking. Left to right, but mostly left. <laughs> well, right in our hand, because we all seen the map. We all caught the red wave. Did we not? Mm. Okay. Anyway, so again, y'all, the meltdowns are real and they're going to be here for years and years and years to come. Okay, because they can't just grasp the facts that we won and it is what it is. So with that being said, y'all, let's dive on into the video to get these meltdowns. Let's go. Coming straight from Sky News. Now it's time for lefties losing it. Let's have some fun looking at reactions <laughs> to Donald Trump's extraordinary win. The red wave has cometh and the lefties are, well, they're giving me too much content. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> The most famous meltdown why, of all. Why, why? <laughs> Look, it's it's fair to say she's not handling it well. As for this <laughs> next lass, uh, I'm not sure where she is today. I swear to God, if you idiots elect that demented man, I will burn this whole f***ing place to the ground. And this you woman is burning. too old to be this stupid, but sadly leftism and TDS can leave the sufferer delirious, delusional and dangerously stupid. You voted for a racist, a rapist, a dictator. You voted for a bully, a bigot, and a narcissist. Even the Germans tried to warn us, but you didn't listen. You didn't listen to the historians, the psychologists, the educators, and the intellectuals. Of course not, because Dictatorship 101 is to convince you to distrust the media, the educated, and to create an us-versus-them mentality. It's always the dimmest folk who going about educated let's just be real real quick y'all see how the media really got these folks brainwashed the fake media it's their faults all the lies y'all got these folks having major meltdowns because of the lies that have been spreaded crazy right experts if you're wondering why these lefties are so triggered so shocked by reality so out of touch with their fellow americans well it could be because they consume the type of media i'm about to show you now here are some of our favorite media leftists who were convinced that donald trump was toast that kamala was going to win and win easily in my humble view lights out please welcome back the next president of the United States. I think it's going to be a blowout, actually. I don't think it's going to be a, a close race. I think there are going to be those Republicans. That just... It was definitely a blowout and definitely not a close race at all. Vote for Harris. It'll be tied on election day, as always it will. The polls will be tied and then he'll lose. You call us trash? Oh, oh. Oh, J.D. Vance, you just stepped up in a way that I've never seen in my political life, and I worked for Sarah Palin. I would say take Harris over 270 electoral votes. Let these fools in these crypto markets do something. Let them, let them drive the betting line into a favorable place and then take advantage of it. That's what I would do. I think she's going to win. You wrote Trump is toast. Do you stand behind that today? Oh, even more so. Uh, I feel the same way that I felt a few weeks ago that Trump is toast. And they're not taking the loss well. Here is Sonny Hostin of The View lashing out at white women without college degrees. Hmm. What we did not have is white women who voted about 52 percent, right, uh, for Donald Trump. Uneducated white women is my understanding. You have Latino men actually voting more for him. Those Awful women and Latino men, how dare they think for themselves. Right. By the way, the exit polls showed that the majority of married men, unmarried men and married women voted for Trump. It was the unmarried women who backed Kamala. What was it that uh, J.D. Vance said uh, about that group? And uh, Sonny also made some absurd claims about 
losing her civil rights. The desperation mm. to be a victim is strong in this one. I worry about my children's future, especially my daughter, who now has less rights than I have. And I remember mm. my father telling me many, many years ago that I was the first person in, in his family to enjoy full civil rights. And now I have less civil rights than I had when he told me that. So again, I'm mm. profoundly disturbed. And the perpetually aggrieved ladies of The View also want greater censorship. They want to curb free speech on social and y'all here, the view now is catching it. Them ladies is catching it because anytime they bring anybody on there, just period, it's always Trump, 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 Trump in their mouth. And baby, they are catching the heat now. They're catching it as they should. Like, keep the president of the United States up out y'all mouths. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say sh at all. Social media, so a Democrat never loses again. If we could regulate social media, because one of the biggest offenders is D.C. and Congress have not been able to do one thing in regard to the rogue corporations of social get media. Not with, get with Elon Musk for them. In, the, in the administration. Now to MSNBC's Joy Reid, who is always having a normal one. Here she claims that Florida is a fascist state. It's a pure mm. Project 2025 in miniature mm. in Florida. And that kind of extreme, sort of extremist right wing fascist type government in Florida, does that make it a more attractive place? Oh dear, and if you're in the habit of consuming media like that, then you may react like this when Donald Trump has a landslide victory. We may not have rights tomorrow. Yeah, I'm scared to go to sleep. I might wake up in my way. <laughs> Anyone else helping a meltdown? I don't know how to do this. Right now, I'm just not. I can't deal with this right now. I am 48 years old. That's the problem. I never experienced anything like this and never thought I would in this country. Oh, okay. Lord. I'm so stressed. <laughs> know how to handle this oh i'm so sad right but the best reaction goes to this joke star this is superb work i'm literally shaking right now i'm a trans woman with a baby on the way what am i gonna do keep it oh. <laughs> now that was parody <laughs> i'm not sure if this next video is i suspect it could be real it's hard to tell nowadays i can't believe Please trump's actually gonna train. win this oh, day Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm so f***ed up! F God damn it! And here is another white dude for Kamala, or is it a work of satire? What the hell? You cannot be serious! How did I wake up to this garbage as my president? That's right, garbage! We're taking a trash I out. I last night and she was ahead. I woke up to this freaking nightmare. What? What election did you watch? Trump, how? Does America have this many Nazi Hitler following pieces of trash? Let's oh. end lefties with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez AOC pretending she's some heroine in a Nazi film. Here she warns that we're about to enter a period of fascism. I'm so scared let's say, peers in history of mass movements of people that mobilize to protect one another in times of fascism uh, and authoritarianism. And this is the era that we are poised to enter. Well, well, well. Joining me now is Batia Ungasagon, Newsweek Deputy Opinion Editor and author of Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. And Batia, you nailed it in your book. You explained the Trump phenomenon and, and the political realignment that sees the affluent lean increasingly left towards the Democrats and working class people, aspirational Americans, the middle class, Go to the right. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. We've seen a massive political realignment in America along class lines. So the biggest divider in America is not actually left versus right, as everybody saw on election night. It's the elites versus the working class. It's the hmm. credentialed, college-educated people who work in the knowledge industry and people who work with their hands for a living, people who don't have a degree. And what happened over the last 50 years was the Democrats created an economy that was an upward transfer of wealth from the working class, the hardest working Americans, mm -hmm. into the pockets of the elites, mm -hmm. the chattering class, the political class, the economists who were creating this policy. And as a result, working class Americans of hey. all races stopped seeing themselves reflected in the Democratic Party. And when Trump showed up on the scene, it's really amazing, Rita, how did he get all these Democrats to vote for him? He simply lifted the Democrats' pro-labor, pro-working class economic agenda right off of them. It was the Democrats who used to believe we need a strong border to protect working class wages. It was the Democrats who used to be in favor of trade wars and tariffs to protect, protect the labor of American workers. And Donald Trump showed up and said, wow, no one is representing 60% of Americans? come home and that is exactly what he did and now we're seeing the fruits of that labor as he walks away with millions and millions and millions of voters who were democrats 50 years ago 30 years ago 20 years ago and five years, years ago, ago. Three years ago, four it's years incredible. ago. incredible. That political realignment, lifelong Democrats now switching to Trump, switching to the Republicans. And you talked about the divide is a class divide. It's not a race, gender and all the other issues that the media is hyper focused on. And the data mm. from the exit polls shows that the majority of uh, households whose incomes were under 100,000 for the household voted for Trump. And the majority of households with an income of over 100,000 voted for Harris. And the numbers almost uh, perfect there. And uh, do you see that changing? Do you see this p political realignment sticking for the foreseeable future? It all depends on where the parties go from here. So the GOP before Trump showed up was all neoliberalism. It was, you know, free markets. Um, and then there was, of course, the neoconservative piece of it. So it was, you know, foreign wars and free markets, right? And social conservatism. None of those things uh, resonate with working class Americans. They're anti-war, they hate free trade, and they're social moderates. They're not conservatives. They don't like abortion bans. Hmm. Now, if the GOP after Trump goes right back to its version pre-Trump, the way the donor class is desperate for it to do, then of course they're gonna lose all of these mm. voters as well. If the Democratic Party learns the lesson here, which is don't call people racist for wanting to feed their children, Hmm. Right. If they go back to their embrace of strong borders, they could very easily win back a lot of these voters. The problem is, is that their donor class, the George Soros's of the world, want that open border. They really don't believe in nation states. They really don't believe in putting Americans first. And hmm. so you have this situation where the donor class of each side is very antithetical to the needs of working class Americans. And, you know, we have one party that we have shown is willing to take on its elites, which is Donald Trump, who doesn't care what the elites think about him. And one side, that unfortunately, part. that seems unwilling to take on its elites. So that's really what we're going to be looking looking for in the next 10 years. I can't see the Democrats changing uh, yeah. anytime soon. <laughs> and they, I think, are going to veer even more left. And uh, it's early days, but they're not learning the lessons from this loss. At they're all. just talking about oh. race and gender again and, and blaming the American public for being too racist and mm. too sexist to elect Harris. Now, the media did keep telling us that abortion was the key issue here, that women would deliver Kamala Harris a victory. How did so many in the media and how, many, how did so many pollsters get this election wrong? 
So the polls have been um, historically inaccurate since Trump came on the scene, because, of course, if you're a Trump voter and you're used to hearing yourself called a Nazi by the uh. experts, you're less willing to give them your time uh, on, a, on a phone call with a pollster. Right. And so they oversample for the college educated. They oversample for college educated women. Um, the abortion problem here is this, Rita, you had the Democrats running on a made up problem, which is that there was going to be a national abortion ban, which Donald Trump very clearly said he would veto because he believes in the right to an abortion for 12 to 15 weeks and for exceptions for the mother's health, rape and incest. So it was a made up fake problem that allowed rich, educated women to feel like the real oppressed class in this country. And Donald Trump was running on a real yeah. problem, which is that working class men cannot afford to feed their families anymore. And I think the Democrats thought that, you know, with the Obamas berating men to show up for this fake problem for rich women to protect the feelings of rich women, I think the left thought this would be a winning argument when it turned out that it was working class women who showed up for their husbands and sons hmm. and for their dignity because hmm. that was a real problem. And of course, working class men of all races who have just had it with a party that sneers at them, has contempt for them, has shipped their jobs overseas or imported 15 million people to do them here for less money. They're just sick of it. They're sick of being called racists for wanting to feed their family. Their grievances are real. And Donald Trump gave them that dignity back. And I think that this was a seismic shift because it is undeniable what is happening now. The Democrats have become the party of leftist elites. They have thumbed their nose at labor. Their immense contempt for the working class, the backbone of this country, has been made so clear as they continue to blame voters for Donald Trump's dignity uh, w win instead of saying he won because he gave dignity back to the American working class. It's simple. You get me? Bashi Ungosagon, your insights are always, always appreciated on this program. Thanks so much for your Thank time you, girl. this evening. Thank you, girl. Yeah, y'all, so the meltdowns be real, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, your boy Trump is gathering his people now before they enter the White House in January. He ain't playing no games. The guys he is actually, and women he is actually putting in place, from what y'all been telling me, from what I've been reading, it's going to get the job done. They ain't come to play. They ain't come to play. They ain't come to play. And it's really sad. These meltdowns is happening because of the lies, y'all. I was one of them. I probably would be having a meltdown if I still had the same mind frame I had two years ago. But the magic of researching, getting the information for myself, finding out what I need to find out. I can stand here today to say I made a great choice this year on, well, before November 5th, because I voted early. I walked in there knowing exactly who I was voting for, why I was voting for, what did I want? You know what I'm saying? That's the best part of me voting again is because of the knowledge that I have learned over the year, over the two years that's getting ready to come up to coming up on two years is because I took time out for myself to just figure this out. I no longer am letting the media or anybody feed me, feed me. I'm feeding myself, okay? I'm feeding myself, and it feels good. It really does. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. I love y'all. Until the next reaction, y'all, your girl is out. <laughs>